On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 2017. We're going to be taking a look at Celine Dion, and she's going to be performing to Le Blue Son Écrit pour Toi. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. First of all, apologies to any French speakers for my pronunciation. In the intro, it's been a very long time since I've spoken any French, uh, but this roughly translates as all the blues are written for you. So we are going to be jumping into this video as well. So if you want to watch it the whole way through without me interrupting it, there's a link in the description below as always. So you can click on that. And it is crowd footage. So just so we get a lay of the land before we get Celine and the band up on screen. But let's see how she gets on. <laughs> I'm just going to jump in here just after this first key change and I will be pointing out the key changes and referencing them later on when we get the guitar out as well because there's some really cool playing going on here and we've got Kevin Girard on guitar laying down some great blues lines and he's in total control the whole time of that vibrato really nice tone as well but just putting the spotlight on Celine here because she's got one of those voices that is unmistakable. The way that she changes from her open sound and her open vowels into her closed vowels, where she brings in a lot of that nasal sound, that covered sound vocally. There is so much that we've gone through already in terms of the pitch and the range with Celine. Because we're now going into a key change, it means that everything we've just heard is going to get raised up. So now she's going to be singing higher notes and by the end of the song, we would have had another key change, which actually reverts back to the original key, but now she sings even higher, going all the way to an octave and then two octaves above. So just to give a quick example of what I'm talking about with that open sound vocally, then going to a more covered sound with that nasal quality to it as well. Let's have a listen to this. <laughs> it's that that kind of open sound into the close sound that I just did there. So if we went, ah, 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 hopefully you can hear the difference between, I'm not gonna attempt to sing and speak French. I don't know what the words are anyway, even if they were English, but that difference between the sound and also hitting these notes, they are way up there. I think that was just a C sharp maybe. So for a guy to be singing, this is pretty a bad idea. But the difference between those vowels in terms of being open and then being a little bit closed. And just to explain what that is, when we go from ah, 
that's really open, that sound, and it's quite biting, but then going, ah, ah, I'm now putting a lot of the sound through my nose, rather than going, ah, 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 I'm going, ah, 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 and hopefully that's coming across on the microphone, that you can hear the difference in brightness. The great thing about the way that Celine uses this is that it's not contrived. I don't think that she's planned this out beforehand, she just goes to these sounds when she wants to, and just has that ability to cover the sound, open it up a little bit more, put that expression into it, and it's what makes her voice unmistakable, because I don't know any other singer that has this kind of sound to their voice where they change between these vowel sounds and the open sound and the covered sound so smoothly but also so dramatically from one sound to the next. Of course, in order for this to work on any level, you've got to be hitting the notes bang on, which Celine does. You've got to have control of techniques in your breath and vibrato being one of those techniques and she's got total control of that as well, and her pitch is just spot on throughout this whole performance. You can literally see the target being hit every single time. You can hear it. So when we hear Celine just nailing these notes, I've got the piano up on screen now, so we can use that as a reference point to see where her range sits and the notes that she's singing in this performance. So we're looking at all these gray keys that I've colored in. This is the range that she covers throughout the whole performance and the red keys are there to help break it up a little bit but also to give you an indication of the octaves because in the first verse, the low note that we have is our G sharp here and this is gonna be the G sharp three and then an octave above this will be here, which is our G sharp four. And I've just marked here, you can see we've got the C sharp four, which is where the key change comes in and the vocal now just transitions a little bit higher up. And throughout the first verse, we've got all of the notes pretty much being sung around this area. We've then got the key change which comes in, which means now we're gonna be singing in this area. And when I say we, I mean Celine, but we're gonna be hearing her hitting notes in this section. And we then have a key change later on in the song, which goes back to the key that we started in, which means that rather than going all the way down here, Celine has the ability to take her whole vocal up another octave. So that means that when we started down here, we're now from here upwards. So it means that we go on this gradual journey of pitch with Celine's voice, and then by the end of the song, we hit this high note right at the end, which you can see is two octaves above where we started. So it has a mighty impact on the listener because of the pure journey we've gone on pitch-wise. It is such a jump to sing two octaves above. Sometimes I say about singers having one octave is what they're aiming for in order to have that real emotional impact, but Celine has the ability to take her vocal up two octaves, so look out for that right at the end. I just want to draw a little bit of attention to the lead work going on here as well. And, I mean, Celine Dion, she's one of those artists that doesn't shy away from having the lead guitar up front, as we have here. And I remember that she had a song that was very big here in the UK called Think Twice, and that had a great lead guitar solo in there as well. So, I like that song because of the lead guitar solo. Uh, it was many, many years ago. I was just a kid. But let's have a little listen to Summer Carvin's playing here and the control that he's got on that fretboard as well. And there we have it, by the way, in C sharp minor here, so it means that we're going to be starting that bend on the 12th fret, and we've got this kind of... That kind of thing is more of a kind of throwaway line, and the... And the most important part... Just keeping that vibrato going really nice and controlled the whole time. And there, same kind of thing, where there's... So again, bending to the top, and we're bending up a tone here. That's where you want to get to. 
And again, bending to the top in terms of bending up a tone, getting to your pitch, and then applying vibrato at the end. And it's so controlled. This is the other thing that when you do get to the top of your bend, you want all of those waves to be really nice and even rather than going and <laughs> being all over the place. But we haven't got that to worry about here because it is absolutely spot on. There we go, that was almost break into a little lead break there. And we had this. Something along those lines. Um, I think we had a bend there as well, going down into. That kind of thing. So really cool lines, great tone as well here. So there's something to really get into if you're a guitar player, just breaking down some of these lead lines. Just before we get back into the performance, pointing out the key change that we've just gone through where I stopped it just afterwards, but we'll have a little listen to it again. And there we have it. So originally we're in this C sharp position and the key of C sharp. So as we move on, we then change all the way up to E minor. And you can see here, we've got quite a jump going on there. So it means that the same jump is happening in Celine's vocal. Her pitch is increasing by that amount. So it means that emotionally, just the journey of the song is moving on. Obviously it's gonna sound more emotional as the pitch starts to raise up. And that's what we've got throughout this performance, just gradually increasing the pitch and that will continue throughout the song. But just before we jump into it again, and we will do very soon, I promise, look out for Celine's mic technique. The way that she's just gradually moving her head away from that microphone, just to balance her volumes, and also the harshness of the sound. Sometimes when she does sing very open vowels, she moves that mic off to the side to take a little bit of the harshness away from just going straight into the microphone. This is something that we mentioned recently on the BJ Thomas video, I do believe it was, where we looked at his technique, the way he was moving that mic around. Same thing here, look out for that with Celine as we jump back into the performance. <laughs> And I'm just pausing it there to show that mic technique in action. Look at the way that Celine, when she leans into her voice a little bit more and starts hitting those heights, those very impressive heights, she holds the mic and turns her head away so that it's still picking up her voice, of course, because it's pointed at her mouth, but she's not attacking that mic with all of the air and the extra volume she's producing. So what we're hearing it's not offensive, it's not like it's now suddenly loud. We go, oh, she's obviously really singing at volume now. She's balancing it with her mic technique, but great example of it here.
just jumping in again, because now, vocally, she's more in a place of a talking voice, that conversational space where she's not leaning into her diaphragm now. She is getting a good vocal cord connection, but you can see the mic is just in front of her mouth because it's not really being pushed out there. The volume isn't very loud. She's getting more of that intimate quality to her voice to the point where she might have a little bit of vocal fry in there as well. So you can see how that changes her mic technique depending on the volume she's singing out, the notes that she's hitting and how she wants it to come across. And there we have it. Now, when I was mentioning earlier about the emotional impact of singing two octaves above where you started, that was it. That last note that Celine hit was a G sharp. That's going to be two octaves above where we started. So that's a G sharp five. And you can't deny that <laughs> how she hits that note, she is all over it to the point where if you are watching that mic technique, you can see she is facing away from the crowd a little bit, but you can still see the microphone fully in shot. So it means that she's holding it right by the side of her cheek in this kind of direction, which means that she isn't hitting this note really softly because if she was, she needs to have that mic really close to her mouth. For example, in whistle voice, this is not whistle voice, by the way, in that whistle register, as it's also called because that's what I think some people have referred to it as, but it's not. And you might know Mariah Carey for doing that whistle voice. And when she does it, you can see she almost swallows the mic because it is such a quiet sound because that's the nature of having that whistle register. It uses very little air like you do when you whistle. So when you whistle just through your lips, it's a very quiet sound. But here, Celine is leaning into this sound. So she's got that mic out of the way because of the volume she's singing at. She's just really getting such a clean vocal cord connection. And she's not covering that sound at all. It's not nasal at all. It's really open. I thought I'd just get the piano up on screen again to see where we ended up with that G sharp five that I mentioned. And you can see up here, as we had before, the female vocal ranges which you can also see in terms of how far we're covering starting down here with our G sharp three, and then we end up with that G sharp five. We are pretty much covering all of the female ranges as they're referred to as she's not quite getting up to the heights of the top end of the soprano range, but she's getting pretty close and really combining so many different styles within the pitches that she's hitting. When we're talking about, it's not all one tone. She changes it from one phrase to the next, which means that sometimes she will sound like a contralto and then she'll sound like a mezzo soprano. And then right at the end, she will sound like a soprano because it's such a bright sound and she's in total control the whole time. So a really impressive vocal performance here, considering the fact that she's covering two octaves and you've got to admit that that final note is, and no pun intended, the piece de resistance 
And it's because it's such a difficult thing to do as a guy or a girl to be able to hit these notes really up there, like at the top of your range with such clarity, such control. And you can see also the way that Celine, when she hits that final note, she just adds a little bit of that vibrato in there. And that's another thing that's very difficult to do right at the top of your range is to control these notes. But it is so impressive. But this is one of those performances that was requested quite a while ago, but it's just due to the nature of the amount of requests that I get. It does take a while to get through them all. There have also been a few requests for Celine Dion, so I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And Celine is just one of those really popular and successful artists. She's had such a successful and long career, considering that this was in 2017 as well. Her voice has just never changed throughout the years, always so consistent and always has that range in there as well. But thank you guys so much for requesting this particular performance in this video. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Keep those requests coming in there as well. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock.